Hello from every corner of this world where you're watching us and welcome to this tutorial where we are going to be learning how to use Playground AI to generate images. Playground Image Generator helps you to create such stunning images and it can create animals, it can create anime, it can create fashion images, food images, landscapes, sci-fi and even vehicles. So if I, for instance, I click on vehicles here, you'll notice the kind of vehicles that have been created using Playground. If I click on landscapes, you notice here the kind of landscapes generated using Playground. They are indeed very stunning images. So how now do you use Playground? You are going to type playgroundai.com and I'll be leaving the link in the description of this video. And once you get here, you click on sign up if you do not have an account. Then you will sign in to create your first image. So you'll click on continue with Google or you can create with any other email. But in this case, we're just going to continue, continue with Google. Then once you click on that, it will bring you to this site where now you can either close or you can click on start creating. And then you can also select a filter, set the frame size and type what you would like to create. So in this case, I'll click on start creating and it will bring you to this site where you can get the tutorial on how to use. If you click on board here, you notice also you have the board here where you can use the Discord. So you click on the board here to get the Discord and we have these settings here and others on this side. So on the left hand side, this is where you type your prompt. For instance, you can see here tiny underwater complete world in large glass balls. So that could be our prompt. That's where you type the prompt. Here, you can decide on the columns. That is the number of images you'll get. One, two, four, or all that. So I'll be leaving this at one. Then here, you can try different AI models and you can produce different or better results so you can experiment with this one. Currently, I'm using the Stable Diffusion 1.5 and you can also try these others. We have Playground, we have Stable Diffusion 2.1 and we have DALI 2. Then the image dimensions, that is the width and the height of the finished image, you can select any. In this case, I'll just be working with 512 by 512, which is a square. You are free to choose any other. And then we have the prompt guidance here where you can use the higher values which make your image closer to your prompt. If I put this guidance at three, I'm leaving a lot of room for playground to use its own creativity. But if I put it high, maybe let's say at 30, then it means that I'll make the image to conform as closely as possible to the prompt that I will have put here. So, and of course the recommended is seven to 10. So instead of that high prompt guide, so I'll put this one to around seven. And then on the prompt here, I'll now type my prompt here. I want to generate an animal. So I'll write a gorilla taking water. And then if I have anything to exclude, I'll scroll down here and then I'll activate this one, exclude from image. And I describe details that I don't want in my image. For instance, maybe a certain color, a certain object, or a certain scenery. So if I now pick on this one, maybe I don't want to see a forest. So I'll click there and type forest. So, but if I don't have anything that I need to exclude, then I just deactivate that or I can leave it open, but I don't type anything here. So I'll close that. And then I'm going to be using image to image next. So in this case, I just want to generate a gorilla taking water just without any negative prompt and without using image to image. So I'll now click on generate or you can press control and enter. And then you give it time to generate and you notice what it has done. It has just translated that to be a gorilla taking water. So you notice a gorilla can be an animal or a fighter. So in this case, my prompt here means that I need to be very, very detailed on what I need because a gorilla fighter, and then we have gorilla as an animal. So all that can be the case. So you notice here we have a gorilla fighter in water 
And so that is the beauty of having to give the details about your prompt so that you get your image as close as possible. So let's create a different image. I'm going to type here, a rabbit eating carrots. Then I don't have anything to exclude from my image in this case. I'll just click on generate. Then the settings here, I'll keep them as they are. I need it at 512, 512 square. Then I click on generate. Then I see if I'll get a rabbit chewing or eating carrots. So there we have it. You notice we have a head of a rabbit on top of carrots. And that is the translation that it has given to this. So what I'm going to do is on this side, I'm going now to change the stable diffusion, but I keep the prompt as it is so that you can see the difference. So stable diffusion 1.5 is what I have used. Let me use playground version one or V1, but the prompt here of a rabbit eating carrots remains as it is. So I only change the model here. So I use playground V1 so that we see the difference. This looks yes like a rabbit chewing carrots, but it's more of just a head of a rabbit chewing carrots. So I'll come here and click on generate. And you now notice playground V1 gives me a cartoonish drawing of a rabbit, yes, with a carrot, just holding a carrot. So let me remain with the prompt as it is. And then I now choose stable diffusion 2.1 here. And then, and then the prompt for rabbit eating carrots remains as it is. Then I click on generate. So that you see the difference between 2.1 and the other one. So you notice now the 2.1 version gives us more of an image, a realistic image, more like a picture or a photo of a real rabbit chewing a real carrot. So you can also try that with DAL A2, but for DAL A2, you'll need to purchase for you to be able to use that. But now you notice, depending on what you want, you can keep on changing the model here. So if now I'm satisfied with my image, I'll show you the next thing you do with your image. How now do I use my image? First, if I don't want my image, let me come down here and let's say I don't want this first image at all. So what do I do? I simply bring the cursor at the top there, then I click on delete image and my image is removed. So let's come to this image that I loved, this one here, and I want to download this one. So how do I download that? I simply bring the cursor there on the image and at the top, you notice we have this, create variations, we have download, and then we have edit in canvas. So if I'm happy with this rabbit, I can click on this one to create variations of the same. And then I can also click on download and then I'll be able to download that. That's so easy, but let's use create variations. So we want the same rabbit eating carrots, but different variations. So I'll click on create variations and then it will create that image. And you notice now we have a different rabbit chewing carrots here. So if now I add the number of columns, I'm able now to view my images, more of my images at the same time. So for instance, if I put two, you notice I have two by two, and then I'm now able to see the second variation and all that. So that's how you use the columns, but, and then of course the variations. So that is how you use the variations. So for image to image here, you upload or draw an image to use as the inspiration. So in this case now, I'll delete that image and I upload my own image. I'll click on the logo there and then I click on open so that now my logo is added there. So I want to generate a rabbit eating carrots and then using image to image. This may look weird, but let's just do that. So you remember we can adjust the image strength. Let me put it at 19, generate. So you notice this is now our rabbit chewing carrots. So you, noted, so you note the shape of this and this might looks almost close, but let us increase the image strength up to 70. And then I click on generate and then you notice what will happen here. 
So you now notice something has slightly changed with our logo. So let me keep on reducing that, 19. Then I click on generate again. So you notice now here, we now have a shape of a rabbit, achieving nothing really. So you notice now we have the shape of a rabbit that is based on our logo. So that is how you use image to image, but you definitely would need to select a relevant image that would be able to be, that would generate something close to what you would want. So that is basically how you use Playground AI to generate images and it is that smart. I hope this has been helpful. Kindly like this video, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.